What is going on my fellow programmers? It's Real Touch Gmail here bringing you guys another tutorial series. And today what we're, what we're gonna be doing is looking at creating a side-scrolling shooter game, right? So what I went ahead and did, just right off the bat, is I went ahead and created uh, our sprites here. Now these are very basic sprites. I made them myself, as you can see. And uh, here we have the green ship, and you know it's facing to the right because uh, basically the premise for this game is that you control this ship on the left side of the screen when enemies from the right side of the screen spawn and you can shoot them and you know there will be waves and as the waves get higher on you uh, it gets harder and you know you have health system and all that stuff so that's kinda like the premise for this game and what we kinda want the final outcome to be like all right, so we're gonna be using all code for this. Now, if you're not familiar with code, I would suggest learning it because it is a lot easier to use than the drag and drop functions. And it also, in the final package, makes the file size smaller and it's easier to work with. And uh, if you use code, it's actually, you can, the code is a little bit more flexible than you know just the drag and drop actions. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So right off the bat what I like to do with any game that I create is first off let's establish the main character uh, or the the player so this is gonna be our ship so I'm gonna say obj underscore ship now notice here that I do put SPR and obj in front of the different objects and that are uh, in front of the different names here because if I if I just put ship basically what happens is I now need an object name and if I put ship again Game Maker won't allow that because you need two different file names. So if you just put SBR, that stands for sprite underscore ship, and then OBJ underscore ship, you can kind of uh, manage that a lot easier. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and click the OBJ ship, and I'm going to give it the sprite that I assigned, which is our ship sprite. And, uh, and let's go ahead and create a room, and I'm just going to pop, pop it in the room here. So there we go. So the first thing that we're going to want to create, and this is going to be the first... Uh, tutorial or video is how to just create a moving character and also how to uh, you know create a shooting ability right so we can do a couple things with this and what I was thinking of doing actually with this is so I want the player to be able to move up and down but I don't just kind of want it to be you know just kind of like moving up and then it instantly stops moving down instantly stops I kind of want there to be a um, you know like this friction type of uh, feel with uh, the ship rotating uh, so we kind of want to make uh, the the premise of what I was going to do is actually make this game in space so you know have this be more like a spaceship that would navigate in space and uh, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of rotation onto the ship. That's a little bit more advanced. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can obviously just not use that piece of code. Uh, so I'm gonna be covering the basics of it first, and then going on to the more advanced stuff. So you're gonna get the basics of a side scroller, and then we can add in the juicy, nice effects that make a game what a game is. You know, every game needs to have something special, and it needs to have a nice feel. You know, you don't want just these games that have that bland. Uh, you know, just moving and shooting and very simple design. Now, you want a simple design, but it's always good to, you know, add in those effects. So I'm ranting now, so let's just go ahead and continue on. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to go ahead and go into the step event here, and I'm going to go to the control tab and drag some code in. All right, so here we are going to control, uh, program in the controls. So I'm going to say if keyboard check ORD and then I'm gonna say S because we're gonna use the WSD keys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say V speed plus equals underscore ACC. Now underscore ACC is going to be a variable that we have not created, but it is going to be a variable that we're using. All right, so I'm gonna copy this, paste it down, and actually we were forgetting a bracket here. Let's go ahead and put that back in. And now we're just going to use the W, and instead of plus equal, we're going to minus equal. 
All right, so let's go ahead and go into the create event and initialize that underscore ACC variable. So I'm gonna say underscore ACC equals one. Very simple. So we go and run the game now, and underscore ACC stands for acceleration. You can name that whatever you'd like. So we run the game now, and we get, and we kind of, uh, as you can see, I'm pressing the keys, and we now get like that nice sort of feel where it's not just instantly at an acceleration point, uh, you know, it or it's not instantly at its max speed. You kind of accelerate towards it. But we do have a few problems with this code, and the problems are that one. You, uh, when you release the key, it doesn't stop. And two, uh, there's no max limit on how fast it can go. So if I were to just uh, hold W, it could go, the velocity would just keep rising up and up and up and up. So let's go ahead and create one more variable. And this is gonna be a constant, so I'm gonna put it in all caps. And I'm gonna say max speed equals five. And in this step event here, all we need to do is say if v speed is greater than equal to max speed v speed equals max speed else if v speed is less than or equal to negative max speed v speed equals negative max speed Alrighty, and you'll notice I'm actually putting these semicolons at the very end. These are not actually necessary with GameMaker, although it is good to get in the habit of setting those semicolons because in different languages, you're actually gonna need those semicolons. So like C++, Java, that type of stuff. All right, so this is gonna be basic code that just allows us not to go past the given speed, uh, which is our max speed, which is five, because we set that into a variable. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is just make it so that it can decelerate. So all I'm gonna do here is basically say, well, first I should explain that there is a better way of doing this, but in order for you to understand as a beginner or intermediate, uh, it's best if we just go with this because this makes the most logical sense. So if we go ahead and say if, and we put an exclamation point, and this exclamation point means not so basically if we're not pressing ord s and so we put the double ampersand sign we're not pressing keyboard w so this means we're not pressing the keys and uh, I guess I'm missing a bracket here somewhere There we go. So we're not pressing any of the keys. What's gonna happen is we're just gonna check, hey, if V speed is greater than zero, V speed minus equals uh, underscore ACC, else if V speed is less than zero, uh, actually, no, we would do that, V speed minus equals underscore ACC. Right, I might have that mixed up. Let's go ahead and test that out. So I'll run it. And that did not work. Let's try swapping these values here. Let's go ahead and try that. Nope, and we get stalled up. Ah, I see, so we actually, I misplaced a bracket here, is what happened. We should have a bracket right there. That'll do it to you. That is a classic case of what is going on with my code and why isn't it working. So let's go ahead and test that out now. And it still doesn't look like it's working, although I can now press the keys back and forth. But it's not decelerating. So, hmm. I think we do need to swap these values. So let's go and run it one more time. Yep, there we go. So now we have. There we go. 
So I mean, it's not a big change, but we do we have made some code here. Now, if we like to make it a little bit more smoother, we can just set this to 0 0.5. And let's go ahead and check that. So now, as you can see, it, it is it's smoother and uh, and how it does that. So let's change the max speed to 10. So this now that's why we created variables. So now instead of having to go through the code and actually change each one, we can now just change these variables. There we go. I actually like that better. So now we get this nice transitional uh, type of movement here and it looks good so yeah it looks good all right so now what we're gonna want to do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and create the shooting real quick now the shooting is very basic and so let's go ahead and create a new object and we're gonna call this obj underscore bullet all right and it doesn't need a sprite because we're gonna manually draw the sprite so if you go into the draw tab and we say draw set rectangle or something like that. What is it? Uh, is it just draw a rectangle? Ah, uh, it is. So if we draw a rectangle, here we get three parameters. So we get uh, x1, y1, x2, y2 outline. So here x1, we're going to put x minus 2. Put that together. y minus 2. And x, we're going to do x plus 4, y plus 4. Outline false. And we're also going to go ahead and set the color of this, draw set color, to yellow. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and set draw set color to white. Now I'll explain why we're doing this in a second. Um, X, Y, actually, you know what I want to do? I want to kind of stretch this out, but I'll, I'll just show you how it is now. So basically what we're doing here is we're setting the color white. We're then drawing the rectangle. So it, now we do minus two because basically this is what's going on. If I go ahead and pull up paint here, what's happening is, say this is our X coordinate right here, okay? What we're now doing is we're drawing the first coordinate at X minus two, right there, okay? We're drawing the next coordinate at y minus 2. So it'll be right there. We're then drawing the next coordinate at x plus 4, which would be right here. And the next coordinate at y uh, plus 4. So it'd be right here. So this is kind of a bad example, but as you can see, it does kind of make a rectangle. So we're just setting these vertices around the point. So if we go ahead and put some of this in the game here, we'll just put these bullets in the game and we run it and see what we get. As you can see, we get squares. Now, if we'd like to um, make the square bigger, what we can do is just increase these vertices. So if I say, this is four, this is four, then do eight. As you can see, they're now bigger, right? But what I want to do here is because it's going to be a bullet, I want to make the actual length of it longer. So I'm going to go ahead and say x minus 15, and here x plus 30. Now this is going to stretch the rectangle to be a lot longer and skinnier vertically. As you can see, there we go. So now it is a lot skinnier. And actually, I think that's still too big uh, vertically. So I'm going to set this down to 2 and this to 1. 
Let's go and run it again. And that's the fun with code is it's a lot of debugging and it's a lot of picking what you want. There we go. So now that we've got the bolt that we like, actually, you know what? Let's just take it a step further. Let's say 30 and 60. So I'm basically just doubling its size. There we go. So now it's a lot longer. So now what I'm going to do with this bullet here is I am going to have the ship automatically shoot out our bullets one at a time. So in here, in our OBJ ship, let me go ahead and press OK there. In our OBJ ship, in the create event, I'm going to trigger an alarm. And this is going to be alarm zero. And this is going to equal fire rate. Now fire rate is another variable that we need to create. And I'm going to say fire rate equals three. And for this alarm zero, I'm going to say fire rate or alarm zero equals fire rate. And I'm going to put this in parentheses multiplied by room speed. So basically what this fire rate is, is saying that it's going to shoot out. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. We should divide that by three. Divide that, not multiply. And this should actually be switched. So let's pop this over here. And let's divide that, the room speed by fire rate. So now if we take fire rate as three, and let's go ahead and go into our calculator here. So our room speed is 30, it starts out as 30. So if we take 30 divided by what our fire rate is, three, we now get an alarm of 10. And that means that we are gonna fire three bullets every second in our game. So if we go to alarm zero here, th or this alarm is going to be triggered three times every second. So what we can say is instance create x, y, obj bullet, and re-trigger our alarm zero, and we can just basically copy this, this piece of code right here, and we can paste it right in. So right there. And with our obj bullet in the create event, we can just say, H speed equals, you know, some number like 20, we'll say. And this is going to set that bullet beaming into the right direction. So as you can see, we now have a ship that fires bullets or what presumes to be bullets. And we now have a cool little character that can move and uh, looks pretty cool. So that's gonna be the tutorial for today. Uh, next tutorial, we're going to look at creating enemies, creating the spawner, and adding a little bit more. So, I will see you guys next time. I hope you learned something, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode.